Thanksgiving is not just a response of thanks when something goes your way or you're granted a favor. You see, true Thanksgiving is not an outside formality. It's an inside reality. It's your default. True Thanksgiving is a default and it's not something done for you. It's something done inside of you. When the alarm clock rings tomorrow morning, what's your attitude? I've made it a point on purpose every time I hear the alarm clock to thank God. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. Say that with me. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be made glad in it. Only a fraction of the human population ever truly thanks God personally. Only a fraction of the human population ever truly lives a life of gratitude. Uh, it's so easy to start with a complaining attitude. It's so easy to roll out of bed and start seeing the glasses half empty. What isn't that should be? What's lost that should, that I should have? And so on and so on. And it's just a pattern of thinking. Thankfulness is a decision. Am I choosing thankfulness over complaining moment by moment? We all woke up today, but how many of us thanked God for it? Let's take an assessment of our prayer life for a second. What percentage of my prayers are complaints? How much of my time speaking to God is offering thanksgiving out of a heart of gratitude or complaining out of a heart of bitterness and insecurity? We should be grateful to Jesus for everything. When, when we start off each day complaining, because here's the thing about complaining, complaining lacks, almost always, lacks perspective. What we are missing in the midst of our negative attitude and our complaining and whining is perspective. Instead of focusing on the goodness and the grace of God in our lives, we get fixated on what we, what we don't have, on what someone else has instead of us. And we can lose perspective. And we just forget about how we've been blessed. God, you know, forgive me for the days I've not been grateful. If you don't understand this principle, prayer can turn into a complaining session where we just air out all our worries, tell God everything that's wrong and how bad life is, and God, I can't take this anymore. It's a whole different perspective to say, God, I have all these things coming against me, but I wanna thank you that you are fighting my battles. Thank you that you hold victory in store for the upright. Thank you that what's meant for my harm, you're turning to my advantage. You know, if we're honest, it's easier to complain than it is to worship and be thankful, isn't it? Like if we're honest in here, every one of us, can we be honest, we really like complaining. I love complaining. Why? Because it puts the problem on somebody else, not me. Doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter how much I might have caused the problem. When I complain, all of a sudden it's not my problem, it's someone else's problem. And no one really likes to hear others complain, do we? And yet we all love to complain, especially when we go through difficult circumstances, especially when life doesn't look the way that we think it should look or things don't turn out the way that we think they should. Our initial instinct is to complain, not give thanks. Understand this, complaining is the default. Gratitude is a choice. And even when things look the way they are, you can still choose thankfulness. You can still choose gratitude. You can still choose worship. Gratitude is a constant mindset of thankfulness. It's more than just saying thank you every once in a while to God or to people. It's an attitude of gratitude that you make as your lifestyle. You see, true thanksgiving is when there's more to complain about, but we choose to look for what we can be thankful for. A few years ago, I was in a car with a man who was very successful and very rich. He had everything you could ever think of. He was the envy of all of his business partners. But the more we spoke about stuff going on on the inside, he began to weep. 
he confessed that although on the outside everything seemed great, he was miserable on the inside. Wealth and success had not been able to fill the empty places in his heart. But then on another occasion, I visited another man as we, and we sat with his family of five and they lived in a, hum, in a humble little country setting. His house was small and he almost had nothing in the way of worldly possessions. Yet his face was radiant as he told me about his church and his involvement and, and how God had filled their lives with joy and gladness. <laughs> and when it was all done, I was convinced that the second man was really the successful and rich man. The second man was the one that had the greatest wealth. Although he didn't have much of, in the way of possessions, he had learned to be truly thankful for everything God had given to him. Paul the Apostle declared, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Spirit of thankfulness makes all the difference, don't you think? Here's a question. Are you constantly preoccupied with what you do not have? Or have you learned to thank God for what you do have? The Bible commands us give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, I don't know what trials you may be facing right now, but God does, and He loves you, and He is with you. Cultivate a spirit of true thankfulness, even in the midst of trials, before God rewards, before God heals, in the midst of the headaches, before God brings wholeness, be thankful. We can be thankful for a lot of stuff in the midst of affliction, can't we? Then remember, Every day can be a day of thanksgiving. Don't let a day go by without thanking God for His mercy and His grace to us in Christ Jesus. When we wake up in the morning, you know what I say? I sit up and go, Jesus, thank you. I'm alive. I woke up alive. I have one more day to praise you. Think about what we, think about the things that God provides for you that cost you nothing. When you get up in the morning tomorrow, go, find something to be gra grateful for and thank Jesus for it. In the words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he says this, he says, it is only with gratitude that life becomes rich. I take time every morning to start the day off in faith, pray and read my Bible. But 90% of my prayer time is thanking God for what he's done and thanking Him for what He's promised. Father, thank You that I'm blessed. Thank You that You've crowned me with favor. Thank You that I'm anointed. Thank You that my children are mighty in the land. Thank You that Your angels watch after us. Lord, I thank You that You're still in control. I thank You that Your mercy is bigger than my mistakes, that You're the God of another chance, that Your purpose for my life can still come to pass. Do we, do we pause to give Him thanks for all of those things? Or do our worries and concerns, the, the waves and the storm overshadow the, the items that we can be grateful for? Every single day, so here's, here's some application if you're interested. Every day of my life I wake up and I write down five things I'm thankful for. Five things I'm thankful for. It has been one of the greatest gifts to me just to start my day in the direction of gratitude and reflecting on God's goodness, it has been a tremendous gift. And any one of you can do it. Like you take, the, like I, it's not proprietary, take that and steal it. I just got a journal. I mean, it, I just, I have a journal. I open it up, I write five things down. And I can look back and like see things I don't even remember writing down. It's like, oh yeah, God is faithful. God is faithful. He is trustworthy. I would challenge you to do this for the next week. Just every day, Write down three things that you are specifically grateful for. Take a few minutes every morning, write down three things you are specifically grateful for. Be grateful in any and every circumstance. And when we do that, it just it changes so much of how we see the world. It changes us. 
I think you'd agree with me that it's, isn't it so easy to allow a spirit of ingratitude to harden our hearts until a, a sense of entitlement pervades us? And instead of being thankful, we think we're owed what we got. And we actually should have more. <laughs> but from one end of the Bible to the other, we're commanded to be thankful in whatever circumstances we're in. If we don't learn and practice true thanksgiving now when there's nothing there, then when God gives you more, you'll still be dissatisfied. It's not the amount of possessions, it's the amount of heart within those possessions, whether it's big or small. Thanksgiving, giving thanks, is an act of worship to God. This is something we're to do when life is hard, when difficulty strikes, when chaos is all around us. We are still called to worship with thankfulness the God who created us. For true thanksgiving is only found in the midst of true adversity, regardless of the circumstances. This should be one of the most distinctive marks of a believer of Jesus Christ. Before we see favor, before we see advantage, before we see our prayers answered, 30 times in the book of Psalms, we're instructed to give thanks, not due to any favorable circumstance, but in the midst of dire straits. You see, true thanksgiving is recognizing the safekeeping of God in times of adversity. Thanksgiving is part of the most intimate relationship between God and man. But let me encourage you that true thanksgiving does not start after something good happens. See, sometimes we wait for the conclusion, we wait for the result, and then we say thank you. True thanksgiving happens when, regardless of the circumstance, I have a predisposition of thankfulness because God is still in control no matter what. The whole key is you can't wait for it to change. Then you're going to thank Him. You have to thank Him in advance. That's your faith being released. Look back over your life. There's not a time that God has failed you. May not have been easy, but He made a way. He sustained you through the loss. He had mercy on your mistakes. He opened doors you couldn't open. He brought awesome people into your life. Why are you doubting Him now? Why are you worrying your prayers? Start adding thanksgiving to your request. Thank God in the midst of the challenge for what he's about to do. Hey, this is the greatest day of your life. Well, how can you say that, Rick? Well, because it's the only day you've got. Yesterday's gone forever. And you can't guarantee you're gonna be here tomorrow. What is your life? It's a vapor that appears for a moment and it's gone. Most not of tomorrow for you don't know what a day may bring forth. So every day the sun comes up, you need to try to find something good about that day because your life is lived one 24 hour span at a time. Today, look around. Surely there are small blessings, little joys, tiny hints of God's favor for which you can be grateful. Don't take things for granted today. Take them with gratitude. 